comply with the bullet being fired with a speed of 450 milliseconds and an angle of 30 degrees. So we're going to do those, 450 milliseconds at an angle of 30 degrees. And we can always do A equals 0 and A equals minus 9.8. And uh, we need to know the initial velocity. So you'll find on the formula sheet the VH, the V cos theta formula there to find the initial horizontal velocity. So you're going to be putting in 450 cos 30. And uh, you can do the same thing. Right there. You can do the same thing over here for v, v. You'll find that VO is a vertical position. There's a formula for that sine of V, V sine of V. Uh, so you're going to do 450 sine V. And so you're going to get 225 meters per second there. That's the starting velocity there, positioning. You break this up into components, basically. And this one here is close enough to 390 meters per second. Okay, sideways. Right, so that's part A done, which says break up the part into its horizontal vertical components. What's the time taken for the ball to reach maximum height? So, what would the time taken be to get to maximum height? Now, you need to do this anyway, otherwise you couldn't do it. So, what is the time to get to the peak height? So for part A, it's going to go like this, the motion. We want to work out what's going to, how long it takes to go from here to here. So I would divide this into two halves, this motion here, because at the top here, Vt at the top, velocity two seconds later, is zero always. Now if you don't remember that, you don't put it into your columns, and you don't consider it, you cannot answer most questions in this section. So just remember that Vt here is zero at the top, and it's halfway. Top of the motion halfway. So now we've got information to do this. We've got Vt equals Vo plus Av. Okay, so you've got 0 equals 225 plus minus 9.8t. So you should find that t will be minus 2.5 over minus 9.8. Now that's only half. So to get the total, we need to double it. So total would be 2 times plus 23, and that's close enough to the second mark is the rounding. So there's your time there, don't forget to double the C here because it is only halfway. And that's the important thing to actually put in. Alright. Now the second part, what's the maximum height and then we'll do the range. So maximum height then range. So the maximum height would still be on this side here, part B. So in part B we're trying to find the maximum height. Now, you're going to use this formula here, and this time the VO is not zero because we're actually going to fly upwards. So don't forget here, you want to put in half the time for the peak height. If you put in the full time, it's going to be back on the ground again, and the placement is going to be very close to zero or exactly zero, um, depending on landing off here. So you're going to put in initial velocity there, that's 225. We want to put in half the time, which is 23, and we want to do uh, minus 4.9. Times by 23 squared. So it's random there. So you're basically doing a half minus 9.8 there. You're going to get out 2580 meters. Alright, if you break this off 2.58 uh, increasing meters. Now, part C was to get the range. The range here will appear in this column using the horizontal part. And again, don't forget you can cross this out. Because A is 0. So the range is going to be 390 meters per second times by the full time. The full time here is 46 seconds. So you can throw 17,900 meters somewhere around right there. All right, so you could write that as 1.79 by 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4 meters. Now we'll do question 7 here. Cricket hits a ball that reaches a maximum height of 20 meters and it lands 70 meters away. You work where you get to the ball's velocity with at least a bat. So this is really hard. So we're going to find V at the start. So this is a really hard question when you look at this one. But if you break it down into its parts again, and just treat the routine as, as normal. Uh, we've got A equals 0 here. A equals minus 9.8. And uh, we do not know the initial velocity, so we'll leave that for now. We do know at the top, though, that vertically it's going to stop at some point. If you want to go to that, call that one VT. It's going to go up to 20 metres. Four stops, and it's going to go a range of 70 meters. So the problem to start here is obviously this one, we've got more information. I think we'll find the O first, so that's not the problem. Several ways you could do this one. So, 
So this is one of the few times where you could use v squared equals v a squared plus 2as on the formula sheet. That being basically the thing. That is going to be 0 squared. We do not know what the starting velocity is. And we want to know that this is 2 times by minus, minus 1 by 8 times by 20. If you rearrange that, you end up with v a squared equals the positive version of this 19.6 times 20. Which is so you want to do V is the square root of 392. 19.8 meters per second going up. So that's the initial vertical velocity that we've got. We also need to find the horizontal edge we're working with now. So we still can't work in this problem because we haven't had time. So I need to find time as well here. We can do VT equals. VA plus AT, so it stops at the top, we start at 19.8, accelerating to minus 5.8, power 14, so T will be negative 19.8, so divided by minus 9.8, and we get around about 2.02 seconds. Now that's the time to get to the top, don't forget, so the total would be double that, and you get 4.04. And that's what you're now using this other column. So you now have a time here of 4.04 seconds for the whole trip. Okay? This will now work as the F equals the OT and the half AT squared can go. So you've got 70 metres being travelled. You don't have the velocity, but it took 4.04 seconds to get here. So you rearrange for this, you can divide by 4.04 to get rid of that. So you get 17.3 metres per second horizontally. So what you've now got is you've got the horizontal velocity at the start that's left with that, and the vertical. We need to combine that to give you a total. So you're going to get 17.3 being added to 19.8. And obviously that's the total there at the velocity at the start. So you would go and use your Pythagoras theorem, 17.3 squared plus 19.3 squared, put that on there. And theta will be 10 to the minus 1 of opposite over adjacent. So it's 19.3 over 10, sorry, 19.8, that 19.8 over 17.3, 26.3 of 48.9 degrees. Okay, so that's a very hard, it's going to take a lot of time just to do that one question, it's quite a hard one to solve.